Let it not be words of men. Let it be words that will edify. In the name of Jesus, speak through me, speak through my mouth. Let my words, O oh God, let it edify, let it change, let it minister to the souls of women here and men out as well. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 1, but I'm going to skim through the scriptures. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1, that is the book of beginning. For adventure, you don't know what Genesis is. It's a book of the Bible. It's the first book of the Bible. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1. I will start from verse 1, and I'm going to skim through. I'm going to be talking about some of the things that we need to be for us to become great. Hallelujah. Scripture says in Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. I'm going to be skimming through, so I'm not going to read all the, all the verses. In verse 4, it says, And God saw, ushers, please, can you help me manage the people? And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. He says, God saw the light that it was good. In verse 8, he says, And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven and be gathered together into one place. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of waters. Verse 11, he says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seeds and in itself upon the earth. What I'm trying to drive at is that when God was going to create all these things he was going to create, he said, let there be and there was. And after creating those things, he says it was good. Hallelujah. In the latter verse of that chapter 1, he says, in verse 29, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which the fruit of the tree yielded seed, to you it shall be meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the earth, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, where, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat it was so, and God saw that everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Hallelujah. In, ver in chapter 2, he says, in chapter 2, in chapter 2, I will read verse Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to read verse 18 of chapter 2. Verse 18. He says, And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living thing, every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to the cattle and da 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 da. And God had taken from the man, made him woman. Hallelujah. God knew that there was a vacuum, there is a need, there is something missing. After God created every other thing, he saw that there's something still missing. There's something missing. God had created every other thing. The man was existing. The animals were existing. Every other living creature were existing. But God still felt there's something still missing. There's something still missing. You are the missing rib. Hallelujah. You are so important that God did not complete creation until he created you. You are so important that God made you and he rested. Hallelujah. 
You are very important. Say to yourself, I'm very important. You are not convincing yourself enough. Say, I am very important. God saw a need and created you. God felt there was a vacuum after creating every other thing. He created you. And he said it was very good. You are very good. Can I hear you say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. It is a good thing to remember the things or the promises of God to you as a woman. You are not an ordinary person. You are created to meet a need. You are created to meet a purpose. You are not a purposeless somebody. You are meant to create a need. Hallelujah. And you will find your purpose in the name of Jesus. I say you will find your purpose in the name of Jesus. What a joy. When God created everything and there was not a woman, he knew that there was something missing. You are so important in the agenda and in the scheme of things. And God had to create you and I. Hallelujah. Say I am created in God's image after God's likeness. I am not an afterthought. I am not a mistake. Women, can you say this convincingly? I am not a mistake. God discovered a need and he created you and I. So we are not a mistake. We are not an afterthought. That you were created last does not mean you are an afterthought. No. God has an intention for you. You have a purpose. You are born for a purpose. You are created for a purpose. And you will achieve that purpose in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will not die before your purpose is achieved in the name of Jesus. Somebody is not saying amen like they believe it. You might come from the backside of Ileluji. Wherever you come from or you are from or you have been created from, your, your story can change for forever. Because the word of God is coming to you this morning, your story is changing for good in the name of Jesus. I say somebody's story is changing for the better. You are moving from one level of glory to another in the name of Jesus. By the virtue of this meeting, God is changing your story for the better and to the best in the name of Jesus. You will not record a better yesterday in the name of Jesus. I said I'm going to share with us today. We, we have something beautiful packaged for you and I'm not going to delay us. Our man of God is going to come and speak words over us. Much more than the little gift we are going to give to you. is the gift of the blessing. It is the gift of the prophetic. When the prophecy is coming over you, I want you to take it like your life depends on it. I'm going to be sharing with us eight things that you need to be to become great in life. Hallelujah. 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 Number one, say number one. Be a woman of good understanding. I want you to write that down. Be a woman of good understanding. Hallelujah. I know some of us might not know the story of Abigail, but we are going to read it and learn from her. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 25. The book of First Samuel chapter 25. Please, media. First Samuel chapter 25. I am special. You might not be where you want to be, but God has put some things inside of you that when, when you hear the word of God that will fan the flame of those things, you will become, you, you, you will change from an ordinary person to become a great woman. Hallelujah. Everyone who has become great in life were not born like that. People spoke over them. Words were spoken into their life and they found those flame of those things in their, on their inside and they became great. You also will become great in life in the name of Jesus. Whatever greatness that has been deposited inside of you, today I pray that everyone will would, 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 you know, find the flame for you and you will discover your purpose in life in the name of Jesus. Number one, I say be a woman of good understanding. Hallelujah. First Samuel, if you, are, if you have a Bible, please open to the book of First Samuel, chapter 25. You would enjoy this reading. First Samuel, chapter 25. I will start from verse 2. And there was a man in Mount whose possessions were in Camel, and the man was very great. He was what? Very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was sharing his sheep in Camel 
Now the name of the man was Nabal. When scripture tells us about the name of the pres- of a person, it means that story is the worthy of note. He says this man, you will get the meaning of the name. So when pastor used to tell us, or the last time we had a naming in this house, pastor shared with us about the importance of a name. You don't just give your child any name. Maybe you are going through one tribulation or one problem or one trial, or you are going through one pain, and you now give back to a child, you, you give your child the experience, or you give your, you name your child with the experience you went through. That means you want the child to carry that experience for the rest of his life. It's not right. Hallelujah. You will see the importance of giving the right name to your child. He says, and the name of his wife is Abigail. <laughs> and the woman, and she was a woman of what? Good understanding. A woman of what? Please say it like you understand. He says what? A woman of what? Good and of a, beauty, of a beautiful countenance. That means it's not enough that you are beautiful or you package yourself well and there's nothing on your inside. It's an error. As a woman, you are beautiful, you are brainy, and you are also spiritual. A woman of good understanding is important for any man to progress in life. Not just you alone, for anyone connected to you. For you to move ahead in life, you must have good understanding. We will understand when we read the story of this woman in scriptures. He says, Abigail was not just beautiful. Trust me, I want you to look delectable. I want you to look beautiful. I want you to, you know, the beautiful that nobody can mess with your shine. But much more than the beauty, you must have good understanding. A woman of good understanding has discretion. She does not talk any how, any small thing. Your in-laws know that, ah, if they give you one, you will give them ten. It's not right. Your wife used to say something, I will trans- translate that in English, for the benefit of those who don't understand Yoruba. That means a woman does not have good character. She's saying she doesn't have a good head, of a, or, or a good head for a good husband. You need to have a good character. You need to be submissive. You need to have good understanding. Good understanding means you have to apply wisdom when you are dealing with matters. Hallelujah. This woman blesses me so much. Hallelujah. You can go back home to read the scripture, but I believe God that today somebody's character will be changed for good in the name of Jesus. She says she's not, scripture told us that she's not just beautiful alone. She's not just particular about her appearance alone. She was also particular about her you know, a character. Hallelujah. But the man was childish and evil in his doings. That's the husband. So you can be married to a bad man, but because you are good, you will save your household. As a woman here today, you will be a, a woman of good understanding in the name of Jesus. I say you will be a woman of good understanding in the name of Jesus. He says, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal share his sheep. So let me just give us the background story. So this man had so much money. He's wealthy. For adventure, you are married to a, to a very rich husband. But sometimes riches is not all that is to it. There are women who are married to rich people and they know how to manage them, themselves well. You need to have good understanding. Say good understanding. I receive good understanding in the name of Jesus. Women, I need you to say this. I receive good understanding in the name of Jesus. So this man called Nabal is so rich, so rich that, you know, he has so many servants that were, you know, taking care of his sheep. And David was in, and around and was with his, I think, about 500 men who were helping his men watch over their sheep. And at some point, maybe they were short of food. And David told his guys, go and meet this Nabal guy. We've been helping him keep his animals and nothing has happened to his sheep for a long while. Go and meet him. We need food and all of that. And he sent his men, go and meet this guy. Remember, scripture has told us that this guy is evil and foolish. Today, if you have been destined to marry a man that will bring you down, or bring your generation down. Today is my prayer that God will separate you from it in the name of Jesus. 
That is for those who are not married. But for you who are for you who is married here today, you are married, and you know your husband is foolish, is evil. You will hear the story of this man. I will I will give us his story. You are married to such a man who is evil, stingy. This is a man that they helped him. David helped him, kept his sheep. Nothing happened to his men. Nothing happens to his sheep. Nothing happened to his sheep, and he just give us some things to take care of ourselves. The man said, like this, some of you, you, you will now turn yourself to become what you are not. He abused David's men. And those ones didn't say anything. They just went back, they went back to David and gave him the report. Abby, whatever your is. So the men went back and told David, maybe if they have been discreet, they won't tell David that, ah, this man said so many things about you. They would have told him, ah, don't worry, oh, let's go and look for our food somewhere else. But they told the, um, David as it is. And this meant when they finished, David was, as in the anger was boiling in him. He says, if there is anyone that is set against the wall that is living, that means nobody or calling, if there is any one man remaining in that man's house tomorrow morning, he's dead. So he was ready to finish everybody. So as he was going, thank God for Abigail. Say thank God for me. Because you're a righteous woman. Thank God for Abigail. Imagine if Abigail was not a woman that listened. Imagine if Abigail was not a woman that is wise and had good understanding. So is that's Nabal's people now went to tell Abigail. <laughs> Your husband. Come on. David sent his men to come and ask him for things and he showed them. He told them to go to places and he's not going to give them stuff. Abigail said, eh? This man will not kill me. You know how sometimes they come to tell you the report of your husband. You say, ah, how can you then if me? You will go to the place of prayer and you will pray. You will do things that, that will make the situation right. This woman, imagine a woman of good understanding. I'm going to list out the things that she did. She was, she was not just any ordinary woman. That means as a woman, when Abigail was going to go to David, she didn't just go to the market. Imagine her not having stuff at home. She's not running to the market to go and buy food, buy this, and cook. Before she's done with all of that, they would have killed all the family members. But she was wise. Say, I am wise. I am wise. wise. Abigail had food stuff at home. So as a woman, when you are doing shopping, I know that a woman oh, see, no. it's not like the money is enough. But don't be buying it's wisdom to buy things in bulk. Don't be buying small, small, small. Because when you buy small, small, you don't know when your angel will, will come and, and you will need to serve them. them. Or you will need to save your family. Hey. Abigail was so wise. She had to take food in her house. She didn't go to the market. She didn't just say, ah, guys, quickly run to the market. Go and buy this thing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Before they come back from the market, the whole family is dead. But because she's a woman of good understanding, I want to pray over you today that wherever you've been mistaken or you have mistaken the places where you are supposed to have wisdom to manage your own, today receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. A girl gathered food in her house. If we read further in that scripture, if you go home, you can go and read. Everything she took to David, she had it in her house. That, that means there was meat, soup in her freezer. Every time she's cooking, she's cooking that. That means we don't know when my husband will have visitors. It's not when your husband has visitors. You will not be thinking, ugh. Or what are we going to keep and cook? Your freezer is stocked. Your store is stocked. I pray that the means, the money you need, the resources you need to be a godly woman, today receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, John, it's in the name of Jesus. It's my prayer that you will not see shame in the name of Jesus. When you are supposed to bring out money, you will not bring out emptiness in the name of Jesus. Abigail is a wise woman. I'm going to list out the areas that Abigail showed wisdom. Quickly, let's go, you know, to that scripture. First Samuel 25. It says, verse 14. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, 
David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he rallied on them. But the men were very good to us. Imagine. And when you're in your dad and they were good to us. They are not evil people. They took care of us. They took care of our sheep. Nothing was missing in the things that we had. They were so good to us. But he, your husband, he just abused them and told them to go away. But I think so, you are married to such a man. You are married today. You need to pray that God, the wisdom that I need, the wisdom, the wisdom that, I that I require to ensure that my home is not destroyed, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 16, it says, They were a world unto us both night and day. Now, verse 17, Now, therefore, know and consider what thou wilt do. For, the, for evil is determined against all his household. For he is such a son of Belia. Oh, no, me, Shuni. That is the son of Belia. That means, Belia means the son of the devil. How can a man, you've heard, it's not that he didn't hear that these people took care of his, his sheep. Nothing was missing. So you are around those that are not making your glory shine. Today, God will relocate you in the name of Jesus. Somebody is not saying that, amen, because you think that. Don't write off your own story. When God has not written you off, don't write yourself off. The fact that you are alive means there is hope for you. Scripture says to him that he's going to the living, there is hope. Today, I declare hope for somebody who is hopeless in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Those things that have been causing you pain concerning your home, concerning your children, concerning your marriage. Today I declare that you receive a fresh hope in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Then Abigail made haste. Hallelujah. What did he say? Abigail made haste. She was not doing sluggish. You know how you call some women. One command she swear, swear. You need to be sharp. But you need to be great. You need to be on your toes, thinking on your toes. As a woman, you must not be tall. Say to yourself, I am wasting in the things that are good. We remember, we remember women, we are in our conference. I need you to be, you know, we are lack of this morning. Hallelujah. He says, Abigail made ace and took 200 loaves. Did she say, did the scripture tell us that she went to go and buy loaves? She took 200 loaves. That means those loaves were in her house. The means you need, the money you need, the resources you need to be a woman of means, receive it today in the name of Jesus. To translate your, because a lot of us are hardworking. I know you are hardworking. But the wisdom, there is a wisdom that can translate what you are doing from nothing to become great. Today, receive that wisdom in the name of Jesus. So that when people see you, you are doing the same business. You are selling vegetables and selling vegetables. But the glory on me is different. Hallelujah. Today, people will see you and see the glory on you in the name of Jesus. Oh, that amen does not sound like you believe my prayers. The glory on you. Men will not be able to gain say it they will not be able to deny it. They will not be able to say it is not true. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. 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 Powerful, amen. He yeah. says, and two bottles of wine, five sheep. These things were in her household. She did not run to the market to go and get them. And five measures of patch coin and a hundred clusters of raisin. Two hundred cakes of figs. And lay them on asses. Hallelujah. By the time you are going to your in-laws place, because you are the one coming, they've made provision available for you. Because you are a woman of means. You are not coming to come and wash place. You've sent money ahead. Kill any. What do you want? What do you need? That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody does not believe that. You will not be servant to your mates in the name of Jesus. Where they are calling prosperous people, they will not say, oh yeah, you're sick, but I want prosperous people. No, 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 no. no. You will be number one in the name of Jesus. Where they are calling prosperous people, I say you will be number one in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Abigail was a woman of means. So when you are naming your child, be careful what you name them. If you don't know, read Bible. Read scriptures. Don't just name your child. Naba is not a good name. Ah, you, you will not give your child the wrong name in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And she said unto the servant, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband, Nabal. Because if you have told the man, the man would have told her, Ibolonlo, where are you going? Sit down there. But because she had wisdom, she respected her husband. Because if she had told her not to go, she would not go. So she used wisdom. Say, I am wise. You did not hear me. Say, I am wise. I am wise. That means as a woman who will be great, you need wisdom. I'm going to jump to jump where to she went to, she went to. David. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 23. Verse 23. And when I saw David, she hastened and lighted off the ass. It shows us that Abigail is a respectable woman and respectful. A lot of us, we don't have anything, but nobody can talk to you. You have nothing. Home and abroad. If they shake you like this, no money in your account. If they shake you, and you fall down. You fall down. It's your teeth that they will hear. But you are so proud that nobody can talk to you. You know, this a scripture a man of God used to use very often. He says, God himself is the one that will resist the proud. He's not your in-laws. He's not your enemy. It is God. So when good things are coming, because you are proud, those good things will pass you by. It's my prayer that pride will not destroy you before your time in the name of Jesus. Scripture told us that Abigail came down. Remember that her husband is very rich. Her husband is a man of means. He's rich. She came down, did obeisance to David, greeted David. Ah, eh, eh, Mr. David, or whatever she named. Ah, I'm so sorry. Emma Binu, eh, do some ajo. People will forgive you for even the wrong things you have done. Be humble. Even if you have all the money, be humble. Be, be humble. humble. The Lord is the, Lord Lord is the one that resists the proud. You don't need to be have money. And your husband is the governor. Or the, your husband is the, the most richest person in this, in this whole Lagos state or Nigeria. Be humble. You don't know where that will save you. He says that she lighted up and fell before David on her face. And bowed herself to the ground. And fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. Everything she not the one that did the wrong. It was her husband. She took the blame. Papa called me. Emma Binu. She took share. All the sins of my husband. Just put it on me. Whatever it is my husband has done, just forgive him. So that my whole family will not perish. Your wisdom will save your household. Can you be wise a little? Be humble. This is my prayer today that when humility will lift you up, you will not become proud in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. She made obeisance to David and said, Let not my Lord pray, I pray thee, regard the man of Belia, even Nabal, for, his, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name and fully is with him. But I, thy hand may son, not the young man of my Lord. So she was telling the, 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 uh, David, I didn't see this guy. And when they were coming, I did not see them. And if I had seen everything you needed, they would have given it to them. She told David all the things David needed to get. Where has your word saved a life? Instead, you will be the one to put fire. Is that what she did? Is that what he did? Don't forgive him. Lie at all and from now to eternity, don't forgive him. Is that the kind of woman you are? Today I want to charge you. Be like Abigail. Speak on behalf of your family. Make pledges on behalf of your family. Speak good things about your husband. Fine, he might not be the good one. He might not have been doing good things for you. He might not have made your reputation. But you can speak good things and it will change. 
I pray that the right words that you need to change your home, that you need to change your family, the, the what you need to save your home. Today, everyone will grant you wisdom for it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. She spoke so many words. She spoke words that calmed David down. Today, I pray that God will give you wisdom to change the situation of your family in the name of Jesus. Abigail was humble. She had the right words. Say right words. Her word was able to calm a storm. Some of us, when things are happening in your community, let them not hear your own voice. Be the, be the calm in the sea. Be the person that makes things you know, go smoothly or bring peace to a situation. Not that when you come, they will say, hey, you are a boy. You will see. Is that the kind of story or testimony you want your children to have of you? We need to change. Say, I will change. I will be a woman of good understanding. Women, I want you to say this. I, I will be a woman of good understanding. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. If we go further in that scripture, Abigail did not even say anything. She gave David what she was supposed to give David. And when she got to the house, Imagine the man. This is somebody, this is somebody that denied David that was keeping his, his sheep and his, and his people. Abigail got up and he was making a feast. On party. You don't know. You know, sometimes as a woman, you'll be feeling like, see the man that I'm praying for. Don't, don't say anything. Oh. Just go inside. Abigail did the right thing. She didn't say anything. Some of us, we can't keep it to ourselves. You, you this idiot. I just saved your life. I just saved your entire generation from being destroyed. You don't need that. If God has if God has used you or God is using you for the moment, give God thanks. Abigail went inside. She did not say, and she met Nabal, throwing party. This is a man that abused David. Throwing party, making merry. She went inside. And later on, she went to meet Nabal. By the time she related the whole story to Nabal, scripture told us that Nabal, where he was, he became stone cold. So sometimes you don't need to do anything. Your act of kindness and generosity, the things that you have done in secret will speak openly for you in the name of Jesus. Abigail did not need to do anything. She didn't have to shout. Ah, okuri buruku, okuri oshi. They all manner of things. You are just complicating matter. Save your energy for good things. Save your energy for praying. Save your energy, energy for, for the things that are prosperous. It's my prayer, prayer that you be a woman of good understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, I will be a woman of good understanding in the name of Jesus. Number two, be in control of your emotions and use the right words. How many of us remember the story of Delilah? Samson and Delilah. We all know the story. Samson and Delilah. You know, some women here, or most of us women, pastors used to preach it and try to help our minds. A lot of us do not know the power we wield. You don't know. Some of us don't even know one inch. If we know the power we wield as a woman, we'll be careful of the things that we do. If you know the Sam stem, the story of Samson and Delilah, Samson is a very powerful man. He was born great. That's how some of us, we know that some of the children or the children that you give back to are not ordinary. So you need to put them in the way of the Lord. Samson missed it by the time he was going to get married. He missed it by marrying Delilah. If you open to that, for, uh, uh, judges, you will see the story. When we get back home because of time, we might not be able to read it. The Delilah knew her power. In fact, I don't think she knew half of the power she had. How can a man give her entire life? And he's entire life. Because she knew the power that she had. She was coming to her husband. Tell me the secret of your power. Tell me the secret of your power. Until she destroyed this man. If you know the power you wield, as a woman, this man. If you know the power you wield as a woman, you will use it well. It's my prayer that today God will open your understanding in the name of Jesus. You will use your emotions right. You will use your words right in the name of Jesus. 
Delilah used her own power wrongly. She used it to destroy a man. Are you in that position that God has given you a great man? You are married to a man, you know that this man is great. This man has a future. But because of your words, you've used your words. Any small thing, you rain down curses on him. You rain, you rain down our duties on you. You use your words words. right. Say from today, I will use my words right. right. From today, I will use my words right. Women, I will need you to repeat after me. From today, I will, I will use, use my, my words, words right. right. From today, I will use my words right. You need to control and manage your emotions as a woman. Delilah knew that she was powerful and she used it wrongly. A lot of us are in, in the same boat. You are married to somebody great and you are not using it to further the greatness of that man. Today, receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. I say receive wisdom to do the right thing by your husband or by your children in the name of Jesus. Don't be the reason why a man will fall from grace. grace. You know that you are sexually attracted. You are not using your sexuality to destroy a man. We heard it from the parents. Every man you sleep with, you are joined to that man by spirits. So once you are married to a man, for those of us that are married, use your emotions to go in the place of prayer, carry in the place of prayer, pray for the greatness of the man that you are being joined to. Because when your husband is great, why do they say that behind every man or every, or every great man is a woman? No matter where you are, side, back, front, that you are pushing that man to his greatness. It's my prayer today that you will find right use for your emotions and your sexuality in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number three, be spiritual. Say what? Be spiritual. As a woman, we need to be a woman of prayer. You need, need to be spiritual. Things must not just happen around you. Things must not what? Just happen around you. You need to pray. You need to tarry in the place of prayer. As a church, we are a church of prayer. Every morning by 6 a.m. in this church, we pray. Every evening on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, we pray. As a ministry, we just concluded a 30 days fasting and prayer. And as a woman, your home must not stop there. When everybody is sleeping, make sure that you are keeping watch over your household. You will not see shame in the name of Jesus. Over your children, you will not see shame in the name of Jesus. When things happen to that family, it is you they will blame. If your children are doing well, who would they say first? Ah, Baba Omo Yema Dao. Ah, their father, for those of us who don't understand, ah, their father is good. But if they are not doing well, Iya Burukula Omo Yeni, Iya Buruk, as in children courses, morning, afternoon, and night. Because they know you. People in the community know you. Can they know you for something? Can you be a woman of prayer? Can you be a woman that changes things on her knees? It's not my prayer that you will find one of those for your children. Can you be a woman of prayer? Can you be a woman that changes things on her knees? It's my prayer that you will find one for your children in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Things will just happen over your children in your home anyhow. Because you have prayed it out. A woman of God told me of a story. Her husband was going to go into a business. And she was praying in the place of prayer. God told her. Not to go into that business. It was involving a lot of money. A lot of money that they would change. That, that thing would change her life for forever. But the man did not listen. Sometimes when you pray like that, and the man did not listen, it's now no time for you to now say, ah, you are not the priest over the home. Even though if the man is not a spiritual person, he's still the priest. Because you are joined to him, you must listen to him. Where you take your battles to is in the place of prayer. You go back and pray that you will not miss it. Trust me, when you pray, God changes things. The Bible says the heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord. And it changes wherever his wishes. So it is not for you to fight. You can't fight spiritual battles with you. It is not with weapon. It is not with mouth. When you want to use your mouth, use it in the place of prayer. Don't use it in paper. Abusing the man. Or speaking down on the man, or making refusing to sign. My mom used to say something. No matter how small a man is, he's still a man. 
if you mar if you're married to him, you must respect him, you must defer to him, you must honor him. And it's my prayer today that the wisdom to stay in that home, God will give it to you in the name of Jesus. I say God will grant you wisdom to be a good woman, to be prayerful in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you to be a prayerful woman. A godly woman, a spiritual woman is an asset. Is an asset to any man. You are not ordinary. Say I'm not ordinary. You are not an ordinary person. Women, you are powerful. I read it to us in Genesis. You are not an afterthought. You are powerful. If you don't know it, let me announce to you today. You are powerful. Not just we back in life. We are next to God. Oh, somebody did not catch that. God created. We create. God gave us a book to bath. And your captain is not just to bath children. Because you can come out with a lot You can bath a dream. You can bath a vision. You can bath things that are there. Wisdom at every moment. 
by the time you now become, become a mother, you need wisdom. You are not now managing yourself alone. You need wisdom for your husband. You need wisdom for your in-law. You need wisdom for your children. You can see that as a woman, we are blessed. That's why we must every day, one of your constant prayer daily is that, Lord, I receive wisdom. Lord, I receive wisdom. Me, Nishishe. Me, Nishisekbe. The words that I will say that will put me in trouble, I will not say. I receive wisdom daily, daily, daily. That should be your access, access prayer. You need wisdom on every side. Then when you now marry, you know, you become a grandmother. You need wisdom to manage your in-laws or the in-laws of your children. As a woman, we are so blessed that we cannot afford to see ourselves lesser than what God has made us. That's why wisdom is advisable for you every day. Let it be your prayer. The Lord, daily as I live, daily, Lord, guide my steps by wisdom. Direct my ways. Direct my path. Direct my words. Let my actions be guided by wisdom. It's my prayer that that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Number five. I'll, I'll be hasty about this or I would move fast about this. Be kind, loving, and affectionate. Be kind, loving, and affectionate. Don't be a woman that when people come around, they want to pick you leave. Be kind to your in-laws. Be kind to your outlaws. Be kind to people around you. Let people find joy coming around you. Don't be an hostile woman. Have you met people who are very hostile? They are, they are bad. It can be excusable for men, but women, we need to be kind. We need to, I don't know how to say this in English, I need not to go your moral. Not that you don't now act in wisdom. When you bring people around you, you also have to have wisdom to know the ones that are not good for your destiny, to be able to dissociate, to dissociate from them. Hallelujah. You need to be kind. You need to be affectionate. You need to be loving. There are so many stories of women in the scripture who were this in the Mary, the Mary Martha, the, the, the sister of Mary, is one good example. Even though it looked like she was, you know, about cooking food and all of that, but she was, what if, what if the two of them were sitting at the feet of Jesus? Who will cook? So we need to be affectionate, loving, and kind. Hallelujah. <coughs> Number five. Number six, pardon me. Be chaste. Be chaste. We'll read this quickly. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And first Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. I don't want to. We should open to first Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. If you have a Bible, please open to First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let's quickly do this. We're almost done. Number seven, number eight, and we're done. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Are you getting blessed here this morning? Hallelujah. I know that a lot of us will change our attitude from today by the virtue of what we have heard today. You need to be great. You have to be great. You don't even need. You have to be great. And some of the things that can help your greatness and match are the things that, yeah, it is not an exhaustive, uh, exhaustive list, but these are just some of the uh, things that I'm sharing with us that can help us in our work. First Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. As a lady, you need to keep yourself. If you are not married, you need to keep yourself. Sex is for the confines of, of marriage. God did 
divine step. And it's a beautiful thing. Trust me, it is beautiful. It's something that people do and they speak in tongues. But like some of our panelists said, if you do it before time, it is you being on equally yoked with another spirit being. You don't need it. It's not necessary. One of the things our pastor shared with us is that when you have sex before marriage, it dims your glory. You might think you are enjoying now. It dims your glory. That means if your glory is supposed to be 100 watts, you are reducing it. Maybe now it's now 10. Ah, that would not be your testimony in the name of Jesus. There's nothing, there's nothing as beautiful as enjoying sex in the confines of marriage. It is a beautiful thing. Trust me. You will do it and not be ashamed. But because you are doing it, scripture says stolen water tastes sweet. But it leaves a bitter taste. You might think you are enjoying it, but when you stand up, by the time you are done, you are like, ah, you are condemning yourself. You are doing something because you are not doing it in the confines of marriage. You condemn yourself. It's my prayer today that you will find the capability, the power to resist. Because everybody is doing it does not mean it is right. That it is the in thing, that it is popular does not mean it is, a, it is right. If you want to be great in life, you need to do things that the great do. It's my prayer that you will be able to keep yourself to your wedding day as a single lady in the name, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people can't say that. Amen. I understand. By adventure, you have made a mistake. You've done it in the past. I can encourage you, or let me encourage you, to stop it so that the glory that God has asked for you, the glory ahead of you can emerge. And it's my prayer that you will not use your own hands to destroy your life in the name of Jesus. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. It says, but this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. That we should abstain from what? Fornication. It's my prayer that God will grant you the will to be able to stay pure in the name of Jesus. As a lady, don't cheapen yourself before marriage. Don't reduce your value because of a, a minute of enjoyment. Not just even your value alone, your destiny, your glory. Don't do it. Don't let anybody put you under pressure. Because they are doing it does not mean it is right. You might do it and it is not for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that God will grant us understanding much more than this in the name of Jesus. Keep your body, keep your mind. Keep your body and your mind will be whole. I said something earlier that a man of God used to say something. That when you sleep with a man before wedding, it's like reducing the wax of your glory. May no one reduce your glory in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 119, verse 11, Psalm 119, verse 11. How can you do this as a lady or even as a guy? You might think it's difficult. Mama, I've done this before. It's not easy to hold myself. I've been doing this in the past. Our oh, God is a merciful God. Can I hear your amen to that? I'm not here to condemn anybody. If you've done it in the past, you can stop. You can stop. You started one day. You can stop. It is a day. You can stop. You can make a decision to make it right with Jesus. And you will say to whoever is luring you, whoever is tempting you to say, Let's do this. And they want to destroy you. You can tell them no. And let your no be no. It's because they know that when you say no, they are just hey, I don't know. Hey, just come on. But when you say no, they know your no is no. It's my prayer that today, the strength to say no and stay by it, that God will grant to you in the name of Jesus. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How would you do this? It's by keeping the word of God in your heart. Hallelujah. It's by keeping the word of God in your heart. Hallelujah. 
Praise Jesus. Number seven, be productive. For you to be great, you don't, you don't, you are not permitted as a woman to be lazy. You must be productive. You must find something you are doing. You must do something. Do one thing until you find the one that will bring you, break you open to your millions. But that you are not doing anything, it is wrong. Say it is wrong. Don't be waking up by 10 a.m. and think that money will just fly into your account. It doesn't work that way. You have become an arm robber if you do that. Be productive. Do something with your hands. Sell something. You might not even be the one that owns the, the stuff. Somebody is selling a shoe. Go to them. I can sell these shoes for you. You put, maybe they are selling it for 500 naira. Ma, can you give it to me at 400 naira? So that I can add mine. You put 200 naira. You've made how much? 200 naira. By not using your own money. You are a prudent woman. You are a wise woman. You are productive. Don't say I don't have money. It's the language of a foolish woman. The Bible says a, a wise woman builds her own house. But the foolish one destroys it with her own hands. As a wise woman, you make money. You look for everything might not have joined Yet, but you are doing something by the time they are looking for somebody to give that business to because they know that by six o'clock you have got it to your shop. They know that ah, this woman she's diligent, so far, she will do more. They will remember you, they will be if you ask them for money to even expand your business, they will trust you the more because you are diligent. Bible says, See a man diligent in his business. He says he will stand before kings and not mere men. Because you are diligent. Not ordinary people will find you. As a single lady, you might be wondering, it is until a rich man comes. No, it doesn't work that way. Do something. And that man, when he comes, he's not every rich man that will come or meet you as a single. All of them are married. So you have to make money and make your husband become rich. Don't be eyeing one rich man somewhere. Hallelujah. Somebody is not happy with what I'm saying. Be productive. Be productive. Don't say I don't have money to start that business. You don't need money to start a business. Somebody is doing something. They are rendering a service. Ma, can I? I mean to travel. You don't need money to help somebody. Everybody in Nigeria wants to jack up. Just meet. Ah, mama. You have a phone. And all you do on the phone is to gossip and watch people on Instagram that are making money. Yesterday, we told people to come here, to come and learn how to use that phone you are carrying to make money. A lot of you did not come. You cannot be complaining. Everything God will give to you, he has given to you. God will not come down from heaven to come and put, if you see money in your, in your account that you did not put there, EFCC is coming to you. Trust me. Is somebody that did wire wire and put it there. If you cash it, yeah, buy. Use your hands to make money and see if God will not open down the windows of heaven and pour you down a blessing that even you yourself cannot contain. So don't complain that you can't. Ah, Kosovo, eh, nobody is helping me. Nobody wants to support me. Support yourself. Go outside. Look for people that are selling something and help them sell. You will make money from it. Don't complain. Complainers have not, not nothing as com as complain brought money. Since you've been complaining since last year or since eight years ago, we've been complaining about Buari as he left. He's even waxing strong. Buari is still there. Buari will not live until 2033. Somebody said something yesterday and I agree. Since our forefathers, they've been saying, Iloda, Iloda, Iloda. Iloyoda, people are doing housewarming. People are traveling out. Ah, your home will not be the last in the name of Jesus. Where people are doing great things in life, you will not be a backbencher in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This country is good. Trust me, I've tasted both worlds. I've lived abroad. I've lived here. 
You can make money in this Nigeria. Oh, Jesus Christ. You don't believe me. Abroad, everything you make, the government tax. If you are breathing like this, ha, ah, it's tax. See, if we watch TV, they don't tax TV. Abroad, they pay, you pay tax on everything. If they can collect tax for you, breathing, they will collect it. For here, we will go everywhere. You will, you sell, you can't sell pepper, ordinary pepper abroad, and you don't pay tax. You pay tax. For here, you will sell everything and put it in your account. Nobody will ask you. This Nigeria, say to yourself, Maba Wolowombe. In this Nigeria, I will be rich. Somebody still believes that their own money is abroad. I pray that you will get the visa to go in the name of Jesus. Because some people still believe that there is no hope for this country. So that it doesn't look like I'm discouraging you from traveling. Because that's what I do. If you don't travel, how will I eat? Travel. In fact, start traveling. But in this nation, Nigeria, you and I will be named among the great in the name of Jesus. Your own case will not be lost in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number eight, and that's the final one, be born again. Everything I'm saying, everything I've said, or that people have said during the panel, is for only those who know Jesus. Today, let me invite you to know the one who has beautified our own life. The one who has colored our life. Who has made our life so beautiful. Who has brought us from the backside of life and put us in the front to sit among kings. We were all like this before. I was like you before with no hope. No soap or nothing to cope with. But this Jesus that I met changed my life, changed my story, changed my entire being. He transformed me, transformed my life. Is this Jesus that I brought to you this morning? He's the one that can change you. Whatever it is that any man gives you, they will collect. Whatever it is that any man, if any man makes you, they can destroy you. But if it's Jesus who made you, He's the one who can keep it till the end. This Jesus I brought to you this morning. People of God, if you are here this morning and you are not born again, if you are here this morning and you do not know Jesus, if Jesus is not the Lord of your life, everything I've been saying is like to people who are not in the kingdom. Let me invite you to join the kingdom of those who have become a partaker of this inheritance of saints. Let me invite you to become a child of God this morning. If you are not born again, if you are not part of this family of God, you might not be a partaker of all that I've been saying to say you are born for greatness, to say that you are for greatness. All these pro promises might not be for you until you accept him into your life. If you are like that this morning, can I invite you this morning to lift up your hands and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, if you are not born again, can you repeat this after me? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sins. I join the family of God today. Thank you for your death and resurrection. Thank you for giving your life to me so that I can be saved. I accept your love today and I believe that I am saved. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I say this. Amen. It's so simple. It is so simple. There's no theatrics. There's no, there's no gimmicks about it. It's just you by saying it, and you have become born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I want to invite you to this family of faith. I want to invite you if you do not have a church that you belong to, let me invite you. We are loving church. We are new to this environment, but we are not new to the things of the Spirit. 
can I invite you to be a partaker of this inheritance of the saints? Your life can be beautiful. God can change your story around. He's a father that does not use your past to judge your future. He's a good God. He's a good father. Hallelujah. And he's going to be good to you and I in the name of Jesus. If you have taken the step of faith, trust me, you need to also take a further step by being baptized, joining a Bible-believing church like this, and becoming a part of us. Join the fellowship of other saints. And God will uphold you in the name of Jesus. I say God will uphold you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Is somebody excited this morning? Is somebody excited this morning? Can somebody just share at least two things out of the eight things I shared? Hallelujah.